thanks a lot. Um, yes, good morning, everyone. Um, I was just having some technical difficulties uh, trying to show this up on my screen. So just bear with me. Uh, oops. All right. I think what I might have to do is just to go ahead with it. All right, so uh, good morning, everyone. Yes, uh, thanks for attending the second day of uh, JHTM Online Research Symposium. Hi, my name is uh, Edmund. Uh, I'm with the School of Business at Bond University, Australia. So I trust that uh, you had one of uh, um, the greatest uh, keynotes uh, yesterday. And today we are kicking off day two with a workshop on Using Leximancer in Tourism, Hospitality and Events, Qualitative Research. And it's more than just generating pretty visual diagrams. Yeah. Um, so I would like to start off by asking uh, how many people in this workshop have used Leximancer previously? I can see Aaron, yes, putting hands up, yeah. Um, there's quite a few of you guys as well. Yeah, that's good. Um, so yeah, if, so if you have used Leximancer before or you have heard about Leximancer previously, just maybe just indicate uh, on the, uh, just by showing me a thumbs up or uh, putting up your hand. There. Okay, that's great. So I guess I'm kind of uh, kind of preaching to the converted here to some extent. Yep, a little bit of a, a mixed group here. So, um, yeah. So I guess you know I just wanted to kind of uh, you know kind of maybe introduce uh, Lexi Mansa. But before we do that, just a quick agenda for today's uh, workshop. What is it really about? Uh, I'm going to take this opportunity to introduce uh, Lexi Mansa. We're going to talk about the benefits of uh, using Leximancer, the challenges. Yeah. Um, why do people not use Leximancer when there are so many benefits? Yeah. We can look at some of the research topics uh, in uh, tourism, hospitality, and events that have actually used Leximancer uh, in, this, in this area. Uh, we can look at some of the journals who are actually publishing Leximancer type of uh, manuscripts. Um, and then we can look at how do researchers use Leximancer in tourism, hospitality, and events research. Um, and we're going to look at some examples of journal articles that use Leximancer in, uh, in, in tourism uh, and events. Yep. So, so before we start uh, the presentation, I mean, I just want to have a disclaimer that the, the, the purpose of the workshop today is not really to go through step by step on how to use Leximancer. Yeah, so this is not about teaching you how to use Leximancer, but more about um, the, an overarching view of the, the usefulness of Leximancer in THE research. And we look at some examples and how you can start thinking about, oh, perhaps Leximancer could be something um, to, be, to be used in your next uh, research project, okay? All right, so what is Leximancer then? Okay, um, Leximancer was developed in 2006 by the University of uh, Queensland. Yeah, um, so it was intended to actually examine uh, contextual uh, text data uh, and it was formally commercialized in uh, 2013. Yep. The way Leximancer works is that it's a thematic text analysis uh, qualitative tool. Uh, it draws upon um, statistical algorithms yep, to mechanically analyze text data and present findings through uh, network clouds, concept maps, like what you see in this uh, picture over here. Though. Yep. Um, the thing about Leximancer is that it's uh, you know it actually forms word associations, yeah, uh, by extracting concepts through word associations by examining the terms, yeah, that designate adjacent connotations. 
So what this really talks about, it forms lexical concepts when a set of associated expressions are branded collectively through the text. So you can think about, it's very similar to when you actually conduct your uh, content analysis, whether using you know, manual content analysis or in vivo, you're always thinking about associations between um, you know, different teams, how to generate the teams, yeah, whether is it based on word associations or frequency counts, and then you generate your teams. So in Leximancer, the teams, actually the bubbles that you're looking at, which are known as the um, concepts. Okay. And, and sorry to interrupt. Um, yes. Are you able to put your slide in full screen mode, slideshow mode? Um, I, I tried to do that, but by doing that, it actually um, hikes my notes. To, Oh, okay. That's right. Yeah. Thanks. No worries. Yeah. I, I, I suppose at the end of this session, we'll be able to circulate potentially the slides as well. Yes, yes. Yep. Yeah. So cool. uh, is it Thanks. too small or you can't see it? Or? Uh, it was just something in the chat that uh, was asking for it to be in presentation mode. But um, yeah, well, I understand the technical issues. That's yeah, okay. so, yeah, so I do apologize for that. I was trying to, to figure it out and uh, I didn't want to waste too much time. Okay. Yeah, so where was I? Um, yeah, so introducing Leximancer. Yeah, so the main purpose of Leximancer is to actually uh, analyze your uh, the contextual text. Yeah, through by um, through word association and uh, co-occurrence, and then what it does, it, it then it formulates this pretty pretty visual output of conceptual maps, which we will talk about later on. Yep. Yeah? Um, so this, in a nutshell, gives you an introduction about what Leximancer is about. Yeah. Yep. And in terms of uh, users of Leximancer, how do people actually go about using Leximancer? Yeah. Um, I guess there are, if you were to break it down, there are five sort of um, key areas or ways you can use Leximancer. Number one, you can use Leximancer to analyze uh, huge sort of uh, um, data reports, company reports, business reports, and policies. And you throw into Leximancer, and it generates themes, it extracts word associations, and it tries to formulate um, concepts, all right, general concepts and themes, common themes, yep, um, throughout the reports. So that's number one. Number two, uh, it's very commonly used in uh, in, in research whereby we look at so transcript analysis. So it's a bit of what we do in qualitative research. You have uh, your interview transcript, yep. Then you, um, you transcribe them. And then based on the transcripts, yep, you actually upload it onto Leximancer and then it, try, it goes through to look for associations to generate the, um, the concept maps. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So likewise, People normally people also use this in open-ended survey analysis. Yep, your open-ended questions. Yep, they can use that to analyze. Uh, one thing that is come, becoming very uh, common, yep, uh, in recent years is using Leximancer for a systematic uh, literature reviews. Yep, and that is something I also have done uh, recently in one of my publications, whereby um, we actually examine, you know, um, 30 to 40 uh, journal articles, upload them into uh, Leximancer. It generates these word associations to, uh, with the output of um, your concepts and, and, and maps, yep, to actually generate themes on what are some of the common areas of, um, of, of um, scope in, in a certain literature area. Yep, and one of the, I guess, uh, up and coming ways to use Leximancer is looking at social media analysis. Too. So whether is it going through uh, blogs, going through uh, social media sites like Facebook and so on to actually throw through and extract um, the transcripts and then analyze it. So pretty much you can think about the users of Leximancer is to analyze big sort of like a, I don't, I don't want to use the word big data because it kind of confuses everyone, but the Leximancer actually analyzes contextual data. Yeah, so that's the main thing. So you need to have, uh, you know, your, your contextual data ready 
to be uploaded into Leximan server. Yeah, so uh, Leximan server does not go around and troll through social media to extract the data for you. Okay, so that's some that's a that's a very common misconception that people always have about Leximan server that you know they will actually do the uh, the extraction and searching of data for it, which is not really the case. You need to have the contextual data ready to be uploaded uh, into Leximan server. Okay, and we come back to the users um, data wonder. Okay, the next thing about Leximancer is uh, people always think about Leximancer as is a, you know, when I when I was first introduced to Leximancer, I was really fascinated with the the pretty diagrams. Yeah, and people always have this misconception that the Leximancer is all just about um, pretty diagrams and maps, which is Part of it, yeah. But there are more. There are more benefits uh, of Leximancer that we don't really know about. So just to go through this quickly, uh, as you can see over here, uh, one of the key benefits of Leximancer uh, is the quick coding uh, procedure. Okay. So in terms of coding, uh, if you look at your interview, your your uh, manual content analysis and your Envivo, you as a, as, a research, as a researcher would have to some extent spend quite a number of time going through the data, you know, looking for you know, frequency counts, uh, word associations to generate your own common themes. Yes? Okay, and that can be quite time consuming. Okay, and to some extent, it can be a bit uh, subjective. As a researcher, we all know as we go through our own data, uh, there are some preconceived ideas that we have that, oh, you know, there's some certain uh, themes that should be in our evoke set, okay? And then uh, naturally we, uh, we gravitate towards um, developing those, those themes, yeah? But with Leximancer, it's a very objective process, yeah? We don't actually get this opportunity to have any, you can have your preconceived ideas, but once you throw it into Leximancer, Leximancer actually codes your data for you. Yep, it extracts all the word association, frequency counts, and so on. And then it generates, you know, um, it generates the concept uh, maps. Though. Yeah. So, and there's something we, I, I would say that one of the key benefits of Leximancer is that uh, it takes away the subjective biasness from the researchers, especially when we do qualitative research. Though. Okay. Um, and another benefit of uh, Leximancer, as we mentioned, is about you know generating of uh, the visual maps. You know, so you can think about when you actually do your um, your content analysis manually. You know, it's quite difficult to actually have any sort of uh, to visualize your your data set. Yeah, other than the themes that you generate. Um, and with Envivo, you can still to some extent generate some. Uh, visual aspects, you know, you have, you can even do word clouds and so on. Um, but with Leximancer, uh, it's very clear, as, as you've seen early on, you know, it generates you know, a very nice set of, uh, of concept maps, you know, with sort of indicated themes ready for you to go to. Okay, so that's one of the key benefits. Yep, and you're able to explore and trawl through large contextual data, okay. Weaknesses, okay. Uh, no one likes to talk about the weaknesses of any sort of um, research uh, um, methods or tools, but I think it's important to actually have, have this presented to you guys as well. Yeah, uh, obviously one of the big uh, weakness is that uh, is the preparing of the data set. Yep, so uh, in order for you to upload your data set, it can only be in certain specific formats, for example, you know, you, you can only use sort of a CSV format in Excel, yep, for your data input. Okay. Of course, if you have PDF documents, that's fine. Yeah. But if you're trying to uh, upload your um, interview transcripts, yep, it's best to do that through uh, your Excel spreadsheet using saving it as, as CSV, comma, delimited um, format. Okay. Uh, one of the weaknesses 
even though I say it reduces the subjectivity, is that the researcher actually assigns meanings to, um, to the data after the program analysis. So first you upload all your, your raw data, Leximenser does the analysis, comes up with this beautiful map, and only then as a researcher, researcher we go through the different uh, teams and we say, okay, what can we derive from these uh, bubbles from these teams? Whereas if you were to do your manual content analysis, you actually assign meanings to your teams while you are generating the teams. Okay, so that's one of the, the weaknesses of, uh, of Leximancer. And then it leads us to the next weakness is that there's a possibility of unexpected and un unexplained concepts or relationships. Yep, unlike your manual content analysis, because you are manually doing and identifying all the teams, majority of the teams that you have identified will have meanings ascribed to it. But whereas with Leximancer, once these teams have been generated for you, you might look at one of the bubbles and say, hey, this doesn't really make any sense. Okay, and then you then have to try to understand and unpack and try to derive some relationships and uh, meanings. Yep. Um, one of the big things about Leximancer that people always say is that uh, it's unable to capture any form of uh, body language. As we know, when we conduct interviews, you know, we take notes when uh, respondents are giving their response that they might have certain uh, uncomfortable body language shown them. And then we can take this into account. But with Leximancer, all these are not actually taken in, into account. Yet. Okay, so that's something I guess um, I just wanted to be upfront and show this to you. Yeah. Okay, benefits and challenges. As you can see, there are more, there are more strengths than I'm a bit biased, but there are more strengths than weaknesses in using Leximancer. Okay. All right, the next thing is uh, research topics using Leximancer. Yep, uh, as, as I mentioned earlier on, even though Leximancer was introduced or developed in 2006, yep, but it wasn't really utilized um, and I guess commercialized until 2013. And in, in tourism and hospitality uh, sort of research, um, there has not been many studies uh, that use Leximancer. So uh, in a recent paper that I did with my co-author, uh, Violetta, we actually examine all of the papers that have used Leximancer in tourism, hospitality, and events between 2014 and 2020. And there's only about 33 uh, journal articles that have um, used Leximancer there. Yep. Um, it does not mean that you know, people are not really using Leximancer because they don't like Leximancer. Okay, but I think it's more about uh, if you ask most of the, um, I guess, universities and academics, most people, they might have heard of Leximancer, but the university, you know, uh, does not actually uh, subscribe to Leximancer. Yeah, so even though we know the benefits, but it's very difficult to use Leximancer when, you know, only a small proportion of researchers in your institutions are your know, qualitative researchers. So that's one of the problems. Uh, but we can definitely see an upward trajectory that there are more uh, papers coming in that actually use Leximancer. Okay, so um, what are some of the um, what are some of the types of topics that researchers are using Leximancer in THE? Uh, as you can see, you know, one of the very first uh, published uh, papers in tourism in two thousand fourteen was about Leximancer examining the shopping experience yep, uh, of international curries yep, in, in China. Yep. Um, and you know, what researchers did was they identified themes you know, based on looking at um, travel blocks of, of uh, shoppers. Yep. As, and then you can see uh, that as we move along, you know, there's many other different sort of tourism topics, you know, destination image, senior tourist travel experience, theme park attractions, you know, tourist scam, hotel employees, work attitudes, and so on. Yep, even, even you have a media framing and over tourism, spa tourism. And so we can see that there's quite a nice, um, a nice pool and mixture of topics that have examined um, um, 
use Leximancer in their research. Job. Yeah, and majority of these topics actually utilize uh, online uh, online uh, review data. Yep, and then they actually download this online review data. Yeah, with, through the transcript, upload it on Leximancer to generate the key themes. Yep, and then uh, they, they have their analysis. Job. Okay, so these are some of the the key topics of of uh, of Leximancer. And the big question uh, we, we also wanted to ask was, okay, so uh, where are authors publishing Leximancer? Yeah, uh, what sort of journals, which countries, yeah, and so on. And then it comes up with this very nice bubble, you know, um, now we can see that the lead authors represented about 14 different countries, yeah, um, publishing their papers, yep. Uh, during the, the, the 2014 to 2020 time period. Uh, you can see, for example, in uh, 2016, for example, yep, you can see that um, Australian uh, lead authors were prominent in, in using Lexi Mansell and publishing Lexi Mansell uh, articles. Yeah, um, and you can see that uh, the I guess the 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 two top journals that um, people were publishing in was uh, IJCHM, yeah, that uses Leximancer, yep, and in uh, yeah. Journal of Travel Research, that actually uses Leximancer, yep. And then you can see, so based on our our uh, studies, we also found that um, comparatively, uh, lead researchers from China. Yep, you can see, for example, in 2014, right, they were actually one of the first, um, I guess, first country to actually um, adopt Leximancer in their research. Job. Yep, so you can see that it's come a long way. You know, there's China, there's Sweden, you know, there's Australia, yeah, there's, there's like South Korea. And it's, it's actually quite interesting to see that uh, not, there's not any one country that actually dominates it. It actually changes every year. Though. Yeah, uh, so which, which is very interesting and a, a proud moment for Australia because it's developed in Australia by uh, UQ, University of Queensland, uh, and it has been embraced yeah, across, across the world yeah, uh, by researchers all around the world. Yeah. So you can see that the, in 2020 it was uh, Denmark and UK, and hopefully We'll bring this back, you know, in 2022 and 2023, more Australian researchers will start using uh, Lexi Manson, okay? What you can see, I guess I'm trying to show the paint a picture here that Lexi Manson is not just a software that is based Hi everyone, we do apologize for the technical issues that have arisen. I would like to extend this time as well. If you have any comments or queries to perhaps post them in the chat and I will be able to compile them for 
Edmund's uh, perusal, where we will probably have time or at a later stage to get back to some of your queries as well. Thank you. In the meantime, for some of you who are interested to know more about Leximancer, I will share my screen. And you can see a bit more about this. Uh, there are webinars every Monday, the first Monday of every month. You can start a trial depending on your licensing and how long you have it for, you might want to have a chat with your institution as to whether or not they have institutional access or individual access, or perhaps reach out to a colleague to see how this might be of value to you. So again, there's a whole range of um, resources that are available. There's also some material in there that you could actually see how they can actually support you in your research. Stop sharing there. I'll put the link in there, Mary. I got your point. Let me just park that link in the chat. And that's the link in there. many of you are actively considering the use of Leximancer for your research? Show hands. A few. Others have some reservations or queries?
because there are a few moving parts as well to using Leximensa. Um, one, obviously, access to the software, to the technical or knowledge to be able to use Leximensa, and ultimately, um, areas like whether it is fit for purpose. So understanding if Leximensa provides the level of complementarity or advancement to support you in your research and the research questions that you're asking for your uh, purposes of your projects. I am currently also employing Leximansa in collaboration with some colleagues and externally looking at online reviews, looking at blogs and so on, where we are able to perhaps look at our own way of coding to get the answers that we want. And what does Leximansa do in terms of the coding process and then putting the two together to evaluate if there's some form of consistency or um, similarities that arise. Uh, Marianne's question, would you recommend cloud-based or desktop type of product? I think that's entirely up to you in terms of whether you feel that is something that you want to actually pursue in terms of being always on the move and having Leximansa with you as a cloud-based um, product. That could be one area that uh, you might want to think about whether you will take Leximansa with you to different project sites or countries or perhaps you may be only using Leximanza just in one spot. All right, we've got uh, Edmund back. Yes, I'm so sorry, guys. I have no idea what's happening, That's but right. uh, the internet is just um, playing up a year. So I got disconnected, I believe. <laughs> yeah, that's that's I, I I in the meantime, I mean, I just asked people if they had some questions or comments to park that in the chat, and we can compile that at the end, so you can maybe yes. address them maybe together or at another time. That's all right. Over to yeah, you. No, no worries. All right. So sorry about it. Yeah. So uh, I I believe I was on this slide. Uh, how do researchers use Leximensa in THC research? Um. So I guess we can kind of look at this in terms of there are three very distinctive uh, groups of, of studies as to how researchers in THC have used Leximensa. Um, first of all, the first, the first group is actually uh, the group of studies whereby researchers actually use Leximensa to explore teams yep, in tourism and hospitality online review platforms. So, yep. Um, so as I mentioned earlier on, one of the first papers uh, that was published in 2014 uh, by Wu, War and Pierce, yep, they actually look at the shopping experience of international tourists yep, through, um, through uh, travel blogs yep, and to actually identify the teams. Yep. And what they actually used Leximenser for was to actually adopt um, Leximenser to explore the online reviews Yep, to identify key themes and concepts yep, about um, shopping behaviors. Yep. So the, the using Leximensa to explore teams and tourism and hospitality on online review platforms, that is a very common um, way to actually look at it. And as I mentioned, they have looked at um, behaviors such as senior travel uh, constraints. You know, they look at um, you know, sort of tourism experience in cycling, in tourism, in cruise ship, yeah, uh, customer satisfaction in, in, in spas, yeah. And what they simply do was they look at the online reviews by customers and then they should look at, you know, um, what are some of the concerns, satisfaction, dissatisfactions, and then they come up with the teams. Yep. So that is a very common way to explore teams, yep, uh, through Leximenser. Yeah, the second group of studies that use Leximenser is actually uh, looking at um, Leximenser to conduct systematic reviews. Yeah, uh, we know that many ways to conduct um, systematic reviews. Yeah, but the Leximenser has been something that is quite interesting. They even use Leximenser to conduct uh, systematic reviews, and then they actually conduct a sentiment analysis on what are some of the positive and negatives aspects of the reviews, yeah, which we'll talk about. I'll share you some articles later on. Yeah. Um, and then the next common group of uh, Leximenser methodology is 
to, to use Leximenser to analyze interview data. So that is something very common. Uh, that is something that um, we have always depended um, uh, Leximenser on, especially even when you're looking at interview uh, transcripts, whether you're looking at it manual, uh, manually transcriptions or content analysis or in vivo. Yep. Um, yeah, scrutinizing interview data is a very common aspect of a qualitative research job. And Leximenser actually does the job though. Yeah, so these are the three very common groups of how uh, studies use uh, Leximenser, okay? So let's look at some uh, examples of how, um, how researchers actually do use Leximenser. So the first example I'm going to share with you is, um, you know, how researchers use Leximenser to explore teams in uh, tourism and hospitality online platforms. Yep, so you can see this article over here uh, in 2015 by Sang and, and company. They explore the role of travel blogs as a destination image formation yep, for China's inbound tourism. It is published in a very good journal, Tourism Management. Yep, how they collected data was they actually look at data from two travel blog sites to analyze the meanings within the text contents to extract ideas and concepts. Yep, um, and you can see that in this study, what they did was they actually extracted, yeah, they actually extracted the main concepts and ideas, yeah, um, through the qualitative blocks to identify the main concepts, okay? Yep. And then this, this um, all of these associations were then used to generate the concept maps, you have to assist in greater analysis. Yeah. So what's interesting, you can see that within these concepts, there are all these sort of like, um, You can see there's all these greater insights like within, for example, like place, there's amazing local street, famous and so on. So all this actually helps to provide, gives meanings, yep, to, uh, to the, the, the concept maps, yeah. So you can think about this, it's a bit of like you have a team, yep, and within the team, what are some of the, uh, the common factors of the team, yep. So you can think about when you conduct your, your uh, manual uh, content analysis, you come up with your one of your, your common teams. And then within the teams, what are some of the, the attributes that generate that generates and makes the, the common team there? Okay. Uh, you can see in this research, they identified nine different uh, teams. Yeah. Such as Chinese people, place, city, train, hotel, China students, and so on. There. Okay, yeah. Um, something quite interesting about this study, they actually went uh, a step further, yep. And they actually conducted a sentiment analysis. So in Envivo, what they actually did further was they look at all these uh, inputs from the, the uh, online review, and then they actually segmented or divided the comments into positive versus negative. Yep, and then they were able to identify, you know, eight thousand uh, positive comments and two thousand negative uh, comments. There. Yeah, so this actually provides a very comprehensive analysis of the the text data. That not only were they able to identify teams, not only they were not only were they able to look at um, the online feedback, but they were able to dissect and actually segment those uh, feedback into positive and negative. Um, um, sentiments, yeah. So um, it was being acknowledged in the in the uh, conclusion and and uh, uh, implications that uh, Leximenser provided a more comprehensive qualitative analysis through the visual diagrams, charts, and lexical concepts, yeah. Um, and this is something that goes beyond just simple uh, frequency counts that we normally do in, um, 
in our manual content analysis, yeah, and connections. So that's something uh, to, to actually think about. So that's the first example. Yep. The second example is systematic reviews. I'm sure we have seen that over the last uh, three to five years, there has been an influx of systematic review studies. Though, okay. And Lexmancer is one way to actually conduct systematic reviews. Um, and one of the, I guess, the, the pioneers, I'm not sure if Chen Ming Ming is, is uh, in this session, but he, he was actually one of the first uh, researchers yeah, to actually uh, use Lexmancer to actually conduct systematic reviews. So he conducted systematic reviews on the sharing e economy, yep, um, and to identify you know, key teams and theoretical foundations. Yep, he examined uh, 60 um, publications in the sharing economy uh, literature. Yep, and he used that to conduct, you know, a, a core citation analysis and content analysis. It's very common in uh, systematic review sort of studies. Yeah. Okay. So what did he do? Uh, as you can see, yep, he analyzed the data from 60, he uploaded the 60 um, um, publications, yep, PDF onto Leximancer, yep. And what Leximancer then did was they actually transform the lexical co-occurrence yep, information into semantic patterns, yep. And then through that, it generates the prominent scores, which looks at the uh, absolute measures of correlations between the different categories and attributes. Yep. And then they look at the score. If the prominent score is more than one, yep, it indicates that the co-occurrence happens more often than chance. So which means that if the prominent score is greater than one, yep, it shows that this didn't happen by chance. This is a true and significant uh, measure and connection that should be treated seriously. Though. Yep. And then based on the frequency of the occurrence of the of a concept, the results are shown on a visual map. This is what he did. Okay. But one thing that uh, uh, Chen Ming did that he actually advanced uh, Leximancer usage and methodology was not only did he generate the the key the key concepts and concept maps through Leximancer, he then took a step further. And he actually uh, segmented yeah, the concepts himself. And this is one of the very innovative studies that explains why he's associate professor now, was that he actually further segmented these concepts and he gave meaning yeah, to this concept and said, all right, based on all of these, I think there's uh, 12 to 13 different uh, concept maps that were generated. He then said, all right, this can be further broken down and grouped into three different distinctive groups of theories and studies in the sharing economy. Yeah. So he grouped you know, study one. All of these concept maps are related to you know, business models in sharing economy. Yeah. All of these concepts yeah, over here are attributed to the nature of sharing economy and all these concepts are attributed to the uh, sustainability development of the sharing economy. Yeah. So that's something quite interesting. And what you can also see is people often say, so how do you know which are the more important uh, concepts? And one way to look at it, you look at the prominent scores. And number two, you can actually look at the heat map because the heat map on Leximancer, the darker colors, the brighter colors such as the red colors, yeah, shows that it's a more important concept. Okay, so that's something um, you can also think about. You know, you can use Leximancer to conduct systematic uh, reviews. Yep, and lastly, uh, you can also use Leximancer to actually conduct, um, to analyze interview data in tourism and hospitality. So this was one of the studies that um, together with my, my co-authors, yeah, we actually look at uh, Leximancer to actually unpack interview data from uh, 25 interviews with frontline and uh, hotel workers yeah, in Australia. 
Yeah. So we look at three different departments. We look at uh, front office, housekeeping, and food and beverage. Yeah. We look at the uh, um, the respondents' attitudes towards working in in these different departments. Yeah. Uh, to find out what are some of the underlying uh, themes and relations that people felt about working in this department store. Yeah. Um, and this was one of the very early studies that we that Leximenser was used. Yeah. So we actually look at uh, Leximenser to analyze the concept of interview data between the words and the uh, associated concepts to generate these concept maps. Yeah. Um, and you will also notice that Leximenser has gone through quite a few different uh, versions. Um, and in the earlier versions, you can even use uh, Leximenser to actually um, show causal relationships, but that has been removed in the later versions. Okay, so you can see the darker colors show that work-life balance yep, um, was the most frequently emerging concept uh, in, in this map and the most important and significant concept among all uh, employees yep, in this uh, research job. Yeah? Um, and also something to also kind of take note is that uh, when you're using Leximenser, you're also able to actually extract yeah, the interview transcript. And that's something we normally use uh, in our uh, qualitative research whereby we actually display some of the interview transcripts yeah, to actually uh, highlight or demonstrate certain importance. We can also, we can also extract this from Leximenser to support your uh, conceptual map with certain very direct um, quotes from the uh, interviews. Okay, yeah. So I know I'm rushing here a bit because uh, I kind of stuff up with the internet and trying to make up for lost time. But uh, yeah, so this is, I guess uh, what I have presented is an overview of Leximenser, how it has been used in THE uh, and the usefulness of it. And hopefully I've managed to convince a few of you to take, to take on Leximenser and introduce Leximenser in your future research projects. Yeah. Uh, and I'll be sending these slides to uh, Aaron and to uh, Mariana. And uh, this will be, you can have a copy of this though. With the hyperlinks though, okay? All right, so I guess I'm just going to stop here uh, and see if there's any questions though. Thank you, Edmund. Um, I'm just monitoring the meeting chat and one of the questions was the choice between a cloud-based or a desktop-based version of the product and if there's significant price difference in that regard. Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, I think most units actually use a DAS base. Yeah. And so DAS base is based on the number of license being issued. Yeah. So I think that's the very common use uh, version. Uh, so hopefully I answered that question. Uh, uh, I, I don't really know in terms of the, the CS mechanics of, uh, of, of, Leximenser software, but I would assume the DAS base is the, the more common um, approach among institutions. You got to pay for the number of licenses issued. Thank you. Uh, does anyone else have a question? Feel free to use the chat or speak through your own mics. I, mean, I just wondered from your experience, obviously publishing using Leximancer, um, have you have reviewers actually ask about how you uh, evaluate the trustworthiness of its analysis versus if you manually code the data and whether that actually helps to give it that credence in your analysis? Yeah, I, that's a good question, Aaron. I, I think uh, during the early stages of using Leximenser, 
I would say in sort of 2015 or 16, when it was first introduced, um, many people didn't really, reviewers didn't really know about this software and they were quite skeptical about it. So people often mm -hmm. think about it as a very, or it's just a fast and dirty way of analyzing your, uh, your, 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 text, your textual uh, data. Yeah, uh, I guess, you know, sort of trustworthiness and so on, uh, these sort of questions do come up quite often. Um, and as long as you can demonstrate that there were different ways that you actually use to, to clean, to prepare your data, you know, such as getting uh, fellow experts to actually go through the results, you know, you actually, um, you know, there's a bit of tri triangulation with the literature review and so on. Uh, you know, I, I think is 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 normally quite accepted in, in this in this um, on this platform. Though, yep. I guess one of the the um, things to kind of consider and to to look out for with Leximenser is that you need actually need to ensure that you provide uh, enough care. Yep. In terms of uh, explaining your your results. Yeah, so uh, one of the flaws that I have seen in, in some of the Leximenser papers is that people normally just say, okay, this is a software, it generates those bubbles, these are the bubbles, you know, take it or leave it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then they don't really give much care and attention on, on explaining and or unpacking the results. Yeah. But whereas mm -hmm. if you were to use MVivo and uh, manual content, as you actually take the time to actually explain, yeah, the various teams, you know, uh, the, the different attributes of each teams. And, and then you correlate that with your, you compare and contrast with the past literature you know, on your results and discussion. And I think I see that not really happening much in Leximenser because it's kind of a given, people have this, they take for granted that it's a software that throws out these beautiful, you know, maps. You know, and there's very little explaining to, to be done because everything you need to know can be seen in the map. And I think that's something that people downplay a bit in when they, they try to report Leximenser results, which I think uh, it, it, it can be strengthened. Yeah. Thank you for the clarification. Uh, anyone else with comments? No, I guess maybe during the, the break time, you know, uh, mm -hmm. people will have some questions in mind. If they do, uh, please feel free to reach out to myself, Aaron or Mariana. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we can even chat um, mm -hmm. over the break. Though. Yeah. Aaron, just with your data, are, are you able to um, state whether at present, Leximanser can be used across multiple languages or is it just in English for now? Um, I think there are some uh, experiments being conducted. I believe so long as it's being written in Latin characters, yep, it should be uh, readable. So I, I, if I'm not wrong, people have tried to use it in, 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 uh, in Mandarin and uh, it doesn't really work. So long as there's, it's right. being, there's Latin characters, it should be able to, to work now. Okay, thanks for the yeah. clarification. Um, anyone else with comments at the moment? Well, thank you for your time and, and your sharing. Uh, it's obviously an eye opener to use uh, new techniques and methods, and also understanding that you know it's it's obviously the research questions driving the method and the analysis, and how Leximanza enhances that whole process of alignment and, and showcasing in different ways and forms uh, a very succinct but also as what Edmund has mentioned just unpacking that a bit more in terms of what those bubbles or those uh, analysis actually means in terms of contribution to the topic of your respective projects so thank you again Edmund for your time and sharing over this uh, last hour um, we obviously will take a bit of a break and in about 10 to 15 minutes, reconvene on this meeting channel again, where we'll have a couple of the journal editors-in-chief joining us to share in a discussion panel format on research impacts. So see you shortly.
Right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. See you.